All right, what's up there designers? I thought I'd bring you a quick tour when you are ready to actually slice your STL. You've designed something in CAD, maybe Tinkercad, maybe Autodesk, um, and it's time to send it to the 3D printer. And the way that you do that is with a slicing engine. And the slicing engine I have in front of me here is called Matter Control. Um, there's different slicing engines that are um, configured to work with different 3D printers. Um, I also have a video coming out on how to use Cura as well. But Matter Control is a great slicing engine. It's a great um, intro. It was recommended to me by a colleague, and I thought I'd show you a quick tour on how to use Matter Control to get your your STL file over to your 3D printer for fabrication. We're going to start by just showing you this feature right here in the bottom left-hand corner called Add, um, and that's where you bring in your STL files. I'm going to go ahead and just grab an STL that I've got here called Marker Holder, and we just say OK and Open, and you can see here is the design on the right-hand window. Uh, I always recommend when you're going to print something, take a look at it, give it a spin around, you can use the uh, same features you use when you're designing things. Um, I'm right clicking here. I can spin all the way around. I can zoom in and zoom out with the wheel. You always want to make sure that it's aligned to the print bed, that it matches your design and your original uh, software that you use to create your object. And if everything looks really good, then you can move on to the different print settings. Now, first thing I'm going to show you is layer view. When you press layer view, it's going to generate layers. It's going to tell you some print statistics. So here we go. This object is going to take an hour and 21 minutes to print. It's going to take 3,336.8 millimeters of filament. Um, it's going to weigh about 9.95 .9 grams. Um, I can see the layer view in either 2D or 3D. What's neat about layer view now is that if I go into 3D mode here and rotate this object around, I can use these toggles to study the print and how it's going to be created. And you can see here how why they call this a slicing engine, because it slices the object into individual layers that are going to be laid down by your 3D printer. And I can look from the left to the right, and I can look from the bottom to the top. So that's really neat if you have a problem with a 3D print and you want to study where did that problem come from, you can look at it layer by layer, which is pretty darn neat. Now over here under settings and controls, uh, you can get into some of the different settings that are going to be applied when you 3D print your object. Now if you're a beginning 3D printer, I highly recommend that you just work with the presets. So there are presets for high quality, low quality, or medium quality. You can create your own presets as well. Um, in general, medium tends to work for just general prototyping of objects. What changes here is, watch, if I change to high quality and click generate layers, remember my hour and 21 minute print job? Watch what's going to happen to it once it finishes creating these different layers and writing them. You'll notice with high quality, now I'm at two hours and 45 minutes. So what happens typically as quality improves, the fill density changes, the layer heights lower, and you wind up with a finer quality object at the expense of time. So you kind of have to figure out what's the best um, optimum settings for the object that you are bringing about. Now, one thing that we can do here is under quality, if we switch to standard here, um, notice here under layers and surface, I can change layer heights. These are all preset. Uh, under infill, I can change the fill density. Uh, under skirt and raft, we can decide if we're going to have a skirt that's a particular distance from the object. We can make it create a raft if we're having problems uh, with that adhesion. Uh, it's useful for really narrow parts as well. What's cool about matter control is if I put my cursor over some of these things, you can learn about the different settings because it gives you a summary. Um, and also support material, and you have to decide when you want to apply support material. A general rule of thumb is if you have overhangs that are greater than 45 degrees, you're probably going to want to use some type of support material. So here I've got support material generated. I can select it or I can deselect it. I can also change different support types. So layers and surface, infill, skirt and raft, and support material are all things that I have to decide about before I go to bring my 3D print to life. Assuming everything looks good, 
then under 3D view here, um, if I'm ready to go, I can hit export. And what happens when I go to export this is I can export the file as a G code, and then I can save that file and I can go bring it to my 3D printer. A lot of 3D printers work by exporting a G code to a thumb drive and then bringing that G code over to the 3D printer and physically plugging it in. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have your computer connected to your 3D printer, you can print directly from a slicing engine as well. Um, those are the basic features. Oh, one other thing I want to show you is under edit. Um, edit the object does allow me to rotate the object to different degrees to align it to the print bed. I can scale the object different amounts with different ratios here in matter control. I can mirror the image on the X axis, the Y axis or the Z axis. And I can also see different parts of my print by selecting different parts of this. So I can see the print area. I can change the way that this is going to look in terms of studying the object before I go to print it. Um, I can also align, arrange, copy, remove, or cancel any of those edits down here. So that's a quick overview of matter control. I hope that you find this useful. Um, be sure to check out some of the other 3D print videos that I've created and curated. I've got a whole playlist of stuff related to 3D printing on my uh, YouTube channel, Satili Science. And if you like what you see, give it a like, give it a subscribe, and thanks for watching.